Coming up on Mountain News this morning, officials are warning about the potential dangers of vaping after one student passed out at school. And Kentucky legislation wants to open up more avenues for schools to hire SROs. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. We are just a few minutes past 530 on Wednesday, March 6th. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. This sums up the scene for your Wednesday morning, that's for sure. Pretty much the afternoon, too. We'll explain the difference in a moment. Mid-50s outside our door. Your headlines as we get you ready to get that sip of coffee and jump through the middle of the week here, showing the unsettled weather we have now. Pretty much last into the weekend. Now, it will be dry tomorrow, but it's going to be, let's put it this way, any glimpse of the sunshine? Mm, pretty slim to absolutely none. And then another bout of showers Friday into Saturday. Temperature-wise, we're all in the 50s this morning. The pinpoint Doppler radar showing some of this action has lightened up. But as you make your way back along I-75, as you make your way around Williamsburg here, up toward London, and then as you make your travels all the way up around New Circle Road, 6475, around Lexington, out toward Harrodsburg, that's where you do find some heavier bursts of rain. More moisture coming up from Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia. And this is the reason why we continue the rainfall this morning before things start to ease up as showers mid to late afternoon. And we'll see a forecast high this afternoon up to 58. More about your first alert 70 forecast. That's coming up in just a few moments. Olivia. Tim, thank you. Doctors are warning parents to be aware of the signs of marijuana use in their children. They're specifically sounding the alarm for THC vape pens. It comes after a student in Wayne County passed out in a school hallway. School leaders say they were vaping. Samantha Valentino shows us what they say you should watch out for. Dr. Angela Houchin is a pediatrician with UK Healthcare. She says the effects of vaping marijuana are much stronger than smoking it. The marijuana that is used in vapes specifically is 60 to 80 percent concentrate compared to what they used to call a joint, which would just be 20 percent THC. Part of the concern, Dr. Houchin says, is that you often don't know how your body will respond, especially when these vapes are used by children and teens. You've probably seen multiple of the news stories of people found in school hallways just out, um, and then they find out that they had used a marijuana vape. On Friday, the Wayne County Sheriff's Office says a high school student was found unresponsive in a hallway after using a THC vape pen. They say another student, 18-year-old Alexander Davalos, sold the pen to the student. He was arrested on felony and misdemeanor charges. Dr. Houchin says if you're worried your child may be under the influence of marijuana, there are some signs you can watch for. Typical symptoms of marijuana use are bloodshot eyes. Um, they can be anxious, jittery. Um, they often will have a voracious appetite after consuming uh, marijuana. Um, and they just get very high um, and very chill um, for some people. If you find a THC vape pen in your child's possession, Dr. Houchin says you should have a conversation with them about it and consider reaching out to their pediatrician. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Fleming County Schools reported a student in one of its schools had fainted in a school hallway after using a vape last month. They did not confirm whether or not the vape contained THC. A bill is now headed to the House that deals with school safety. Yesterday afternoon, the Senate passed Senate Bill 2. It would allow schools to use veterans, retired troopers, and retired federal agents to patrol schools as guardians. And I want to reiterate, in no way is the Guardian replacing the important role that our school resource officers are doing for our school systems. The Guardian does not have a resting authority. They are simply a stopgap measure to help a school district that right now may not be able to provide an SRO, and this would not begin until the 2025-2026 school year. 
The bill now heads to the House for a vote. He's played on some of the biggest stages in basketball, but Tuesday a former Kentucky and NBA star came to the state capitol to speak on an issue that's very close to him. Michael Kidd Gilchrist helped Kentucky win a national championship in 2012, and he's played on several NBA teams. But he says the most important thing now is to help kids who struggle with stuttering. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on what took place at the capitol. Michael Kidd Gilchrist says he considers Kentucky a second home, and he says despite his success in basketball, he says what happened in a Senate committee was a big win. For the first time in my life, I'm proud to stutter. You know, and I just never thought that would okay. be. Kid Gilchrist talked about a bill that will help provide insurance coverage for people who need therapy sessions because of their stuttering. Like I probably made the biggest difference in my life so far, other than my kids and my wife. Right now there are arbitrary and really low, I would say harsh limits on whether or not stuttering is covered at all or how many times you can have sessions of therapy for a stutter. The process for this bill to be made law could be faster because of the fact that it passed unanimously in the Senate Banking and Insurance Committee. It was placed on the consent calendar, which means debate is bypassed and it could get to the House faster. Kid Gilchrist says he realizes people recognize him for his abilities on the court. I'm a human first, and I think uh, people see that um, in me, not is the person who plays ball, you know. He says Kentucky is the first state to tackle this issue and believes there's still a lot of work left to do. Like, I just never thought that I would have something uh, that, you know, that, that it might be passed, like, eventually. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. A speech therapist told the committee that it's often a challenge getting insurance companies to cover multiple sessions for people who stutter. Support Education Excellence in Kentucky, also known as the SEEK formula, was created in the 1990s, more than 30 years ago. Since its inception, it has determined how much funding each school district receives. The goal was to close the statewide equity gap between Kentucky school systems. And Representative Timmy Truitt says 30 years later, there needs to be some changes to the formula in order for Kentucky to be competitive with surrounding states. When we start losing our teachers, our good Kentucky teachers to Tennessee and Ohio, that's when we have to do something to stop this problem. And, and the only, the best way, I'm not going to say the only way, but the best way to do that is to tweak the SEEK formula to where, you know, we are throwing the money that needs to be thrown into education. Truitt is in the process of putting a work group together. The group would make changes to the formula if approved in the legislature. The president of Big Sandy Community and Technical College is stepping down. We received a statement from Dr. Scott Rule about his decision saying, quote, BSCTC is vital for education and job opportunities in our rural area. Despite my short tenure, the community embraced me warmly and I've built strong bonds here. I trust KCTCS President Ryan Corals and the leadership of our college to ensure the continued and future success of the college for generations to come. Rule was selected as the new president last August and had only served since January. Yesterday morning, marchers gathered to reenact Dr. Martin Luther King's Freedom March on, Fra on Frankfurt. On this day in 1964, Dr. King, baseball pioneer Jackie Robinson, and 10,000 people filled Frankfurt streets. The leaders met with then-Governor Ned Breathitt to discuss the need for a state civil rights law. Governor Andy Bashir marched on the front line. Organizers say this shows people why they marched in the past and need to march now. It's just to bring the community together as one person, one people, one voice is what we're trying to do today. Is this really truly an in, uh, enactment or is this a continuation of that march because we're still fighting for the same things that Martin Luther King and Jackie Robinson were fighting for then? 
The march started outside of the Capitol City Museum and ended on the steps of the state capitol. This weekend we are springing forward and losing an hour as we are leaving standard time. However, a current bill that's been filed in the House means this could be the last time ever that Kentuckians observe daylight saving time. The Uniform Time Act allows states to opt out of daylight saving time, staying on standard time year round. And this year, a Kentucky state representative thinks it might be time to stop springing forward and falling back. Kentucky needs to stand up and say, look, we don't want the nation dictating what our time gets to be. We want to do it ourselves. So what my bill would do is it would keep us under standard time. And just when you spring forward, we, we wouldn't set our clocks. This is not the first time Kentucky has attempted legislation regarding time changes. Three pieces of legislation regarding changes to DST failed. And last year, a measure to make DST year round versus standard time also failed. And when we return, one of the world's most iconic drag queens is opening his own bookstore of banned reading material. And the pinpoint Doppler radar on our Wednesday morning showing a lot of green. No, not because it's March and St. Patrick's Day is coming up in a couple of weeks. Yes, the rain continues. For how long, though? We'll let you know with the first alert seven day forecast coming up in just a few moments. Stay tuned.